I stood in front of everyone in my wedding gown, across from a tree in a tux. Don't be concerned. I felt as stupid as it appeared. My face was red hot. I could hear people laughing at me. As I recalled stooping to petal kiss, I was overcome with the question, how in the hell did my life get here? Well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I let's take a step back. Hello, my name is Chi Chi, and I understand what you're thinking. Was he attractive? But seriously, you did read the title correctly. Legally, I married a tree. And no, I'm not completely insane. Only a little desperate. My family, you see, is loaded. Bill Gates pales in comparison to my grandmother. That was always something I looked forward to as a kid. According to the tedious legal documents that were written up, the moment every child in my family reaches the age of 20, they are set to receive a large sum of money. Unfortunately, I was not included in this arrangement because there was no way in hell I could make that much money on my own. My brother is a year older than me, and when I saw what happened to him after he received his inheritance, it blew my mind. He went from driving a terrible car to driving a fancy car worth half a billion dollars. He had left his dingy squat mansion. Don't even get me started on the chicks who were suddenly swooning over him. I mean, I know he's my brother, but I'm the one with the looks. I didn't really have a plan with my money. I mean, I wanted to blow a little of it because who wouldn't? But my true goal was kind of stupid. I wanted to build a bakery, so I planned to take that money, buy a bakery, a nice small house, and then live every day like the character in a silly rom-com. Doesn't that sound great? I certainly thought so. But when I was 20, I discovered that my grandmother didn't think so. That morning, I awoke literally beaming. I felt like a million dollars. Probably because I was going to be handed that. I went to her residence and demanded my money. This wicked smuggler smiled in my face. I know that she's my grandmother, but I wanted to dress her up in her wrinkled old face. You've got to be kidding me, right? She told me in her crotchety, chain-smoking old voice, you're not getting that money until you're married, honey. It is not acceptable for you to spend your money on items that even small floozies purchase. I apologize, little floozies. Did my grandmother just refer to me as a slacker? Not that you're a slacker, great. So my grandmother didn't think I was a jerk. I screamed at her, telling her how unjust it was that my brother had received his inheritance. What did she say with such audacity? He's an adult. He is capable of managing his own finances. You require a man. He knows how to manage his money. Last week, I observed him purchase a diamond-encrusted athletic cup. Are you serious? So I did exactly what you'd anticipate. I took it out on grandma. I walked around town, calling her sexist and old, and told her that the rule was stupid and that he shouldn't always be the favorite just because of the trash hanging between his legs. At that moment, she informs me that if I don't get married by the end of the week, she will file for divorce. I'm finished. There is no money, ever. You know that feeling you get when you realize you've crossed the line and your blood chills? Yeah, I'd run a few kilometers past that line and my entire body was frozen. She forced me to sign a contract. I had no idea what to do. I chose money over sticking to my values. Obviously, I went with money. I'm not a moron. As a result, the search for my husband began. It naturally started where most marriages do. I know it's a bar, but I've never loathed anything more in my life. Do you ever plan on seeing a therapist? Go to a pub and sit by yourself. I've never seen so many creepy men in my life. How many men approached me and inquired, where have I previously seen your exquisite face? Come on, people. Or if I buy you a drink, will you give me dessert? It was impossible for me. I returned home. I got some mozzarella sticks and sat in my rundown flat, watching my bakery-owning fantasies fade away. To drown out my emotions, I turned on some reality television. That's when I noticed it. A woman who married took a ride on a roller coaster. Legally, she went on and on about how in love they were. She also obtained a legitimate marriage certificate to back up her allegations. Obviously, this woman was mad. But as I turned on the television to change the channel, I realized that a marriage is a marriage. So I went down to the supermarket to get myself a husband. In fuzzy slippers with no makeup and no bra, I tracked him down. A tiny lemon tree sapling is in a pot. I guess there was something sad about it that I liked. So I bought him and drove him to court. I had no choice but to do this before I lost my mind. As I approached the window and demanded a marriage license, I anticipated being thrown into a straitjacket and wheeled away immediately. 
the person behind the desk linked at me and reached for the phone as if she were ready to dial 911. I assured her that I was serious. She never stopped reaching. If you don't provide it to me, I'll speak with your boss and have you fired. I'm not sure where it originated from. Had I suddenly turned into a cruel, middle-aged Abigail? That must have triggered her to begin filling out the applications. When she asked for his name, I blurted out the first thing that sprang to me. Avery, 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 she inquired, her eyes rolling. Don't pronounce my husband's name that way. I yipped. Maybe I'd be a natural at the possessive, crazy wife part. I departed, carrying the marriage certificate, and went straight to my grandmother's house. Avery sat in the back seat. I slapped the license down and told her she needed to pay. When she inquired where my spouse was, I pointed to Avery. You'd think I'd told the cruelest joke on the planet. She frowned at me, her jaws clenched and her eyes rolled. Don't tell me you've gone insane, she yelled. I mean, I was, but for a reason. I told her how much I admired Avery and his sturdy branches. It sounded so stupid. When Grandma saw the contract we had signed, the truth hit her like a ton of bricks. Money equals a marriage certificate, and I had a marriage certificate. She passed a check to me. That's when I realized I had won the jackpot. I started making a list of all the things floozy spend their money on. New clothes? Check. New stilettos that are high enough to break my neck? Check. A new home? Check. Brand new hot tub? Yes, sir. I didn't even get any sleep. I dashed around buying everything I hadn't been able to get in the previous few days. This was what real life was like. I put Avery in the closet and went how to make my fantasies come true. When I found the building, I knew it was going to be my bakery. I needed to cry. Finally, I would have the life I had always desired. I hadn't even used a quarter of the money. I intended to start a business. I was going to be able to make a living doing what I loved. Everything was coming together. That's what I was thinking. Until I observed the black automobile in front of me, I went shopping at the mall. It was present. I went to the home of a Tinder date. It was present. I began driving in circles for miles to see if they were still there. I couldn't do it any longer. Were they members of the mob? Some hoodlums? Some high school students creep? I drove down an alley and approached the automobile, asking who it belonged to. I dashed to the automobile and pounded on the windows, demanding to know who it was. To be honest, I felt great. I felt like I was in a spy movie. I mean, a terrible one, but a spy nonetheless. The man raised his hands. I took a look at his bat. It said fraud evaluation. That was all I required. Of course, they were assessing fraud. I mean, my marriage was a blatant forgery. The man informed me I just had a week, and it didn't look good. I mean, my husband was rotting in a closet. I drove by the bakery on my way home. I became aware that I could lose my money. It was too much for me to think of losing the bakery, my entire ambition. So I did what any insane person would do. I began to bring the lemon tree with me. We went out to eat. Avery sat across from me in the front row. I heard people whispering. It took every fiber of my being to resist calling them off, but I knew I couldn't. I had to put on a happy face. As a result, I stroked the leaves. I wanted to throw up.